Hello, my name is Cable Green. I'm the Director of Open Education at Creative Commons. The Commonwealth of Learning and UNESCO have asked me to put together just a few slides and spend not more than about 10 or 15 minutes going over very briefly open licenses and some of the reasons why open licenses are important in your regional consultation meeting as we all prepare for the second OER World Congress in Slovenia. So let me go ahead and move to my slides. First of all, if you want to talk more, I'm happy to do so. If you look at the bottom of the screen here, you'll see my email address, cable at creativecommons.org. You can also find me on Twitter at cgreen. These slides, of course, are all openly licensed. They are under a Creative Commons attribution license, which means you may make a copy, download them, modify them, do anything you want to do with them under the terms of the license, which simply say that you must provide attribution or give me credit when you use the slides. We're talking about open educational resources. When we're talking about educational resources, we mean everything that we use in a classroom or in an online course or a flipped classroom or a hybrid course. It's all the teaching materials. It's the textbooks, the lesson plans, videos, uh, assessment items, anything that we might use in a learning experience. Those are the educational resources we're talking about. When we're talking about open educational resources, we mean something very specific. We mean resources where we have free and unfettered access, so they're available to the end user at no cost, and it's also easy to get access to them. It, we also mean, the second point, that you've got free copyright permissions to do what we call the 5R activities. And we'll get to those in just a minute. But basically, you have to have the legal rights to modify the educational resource to meet your needs. So they must be free, and you must be able to legally modify them to meet your needs. They have to have those two conditions to be an open educational resource. And you're starting to get the idea, open is not the same as free. Most of what we find on the internet is freely available, but it's also all rights reserved copyright, where we may not have permissions to do some of the things that we need to do with those resources in our learning environments. So in the open education space, we say that open is different than free and open is better than free. Open is free plus permissions. And specifically, it's these five legal permissions that we mentioned just a moment ago. Now these come from David Wiley, a longtime leader in the open education space. And David walks us through these five R permissions of what you can do with an open educational resource. So first you can retain a copy. Now this is, uh, this is especially important because we're seeing new business models that do not let students or faculty or teachers retain a copy of the educational resources. But with OER, you can always retain a copy. You can keep a copy for yourself forever. Reuse is, I'm gonna take somebody else's work and use it exactly as it is. I can use it in all sorts of different ways, um, but I'm, I'm really not making any changes to it. Revise is, I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna modify this work, I'm gonna create a derivative work, something new, something different than the original. Remix is I'm gonna take two different OER, and I'm gonna mix them together in a, in a new way. And then redistribute is that new thing that I've created or that adaptation that I've created, that revision or that remix. I can redistribute it. I can share it with other people. And as I mentioned, retain is fun fundamental. And the reason that retain is so important is if you don't have a copy, you simply can't modify it. You can't revise, you can't remix. And so in this world of information abundance, where we can make copies of digital things, we can store them, distribute them, and, uh, and modify them for very low costs, almost zero costs. We wanna watch out for these artificial scarcity models that take our ability to retain educational resources away from us. With OER, you never have to worry about that. You always get to keep a copy and you've got the legal rights to modify it to meet your needs. 
Now, the, the legal tools or the open licenses that we use in OER um, are uh, either the works are in the public domain or they have a, an open license on them. And more often than not, that's a Creative Commons license. Creative Commons is a nonprofit organization. We're 15 years old. We build and steward the open copyright licenses that the world uses to share educational resources, scientific research, uh, open access articles, uh, government data, you name it. If it can be copyrighted, you can put a Creative Commons license on it and share it with everybody else in the world. Our licenses work around the world, and we've got teams in over 87 countries helping people learn about and apply Creative Commons licenses. So when you think about Creative Commons, it kind of sits between this space of all rights reserved copyright on the right side and the public domain on the left. Now for something that's all rights reserved to make it into the public domain, two things have to happen. First, the author has to die, and then somewhere between 70 and 100 years have to go by before that all rights reserved copyright works goes into the public domain. Now, for those of us that want to share today or maybe next week, that's too long. We'd rather not have to die first and then wait for 70 to 100 years. We'd like to keep our copyright and share under an open license and share under the terms and conditions that we choose. And that's what Creative Commons licenses are. They allow the author to keep their copyright and share their work under an open license. And when they share their work, they can choose these different conditions, these different permissions that they're sharing with the public. The first one, attribution, is not optional. All of the Creative Commons licenses require that if you use somebody's work, you have to give them credit. You have to give attribution. Share alike, the other three are optional. Share alike means if I take your work and I modify it, I must share my changed version, my modified version, under the same terms that you shared your original work under. Non-commercial is what it sounds like. You can use my work for free, you can modify it, you can make copies of it, you can perform it, but you cannot sell it. You can't take my work, put it on the internet, and charge 20 euros to access it. No derivatives means you can use my work for free, you can make copies, but you cannot change it. So no changes to my work. When you mix these uh, different conditions of Creative Commons licenses together, what you get are one of six different Creative Commons licenses. So when you see or see these on the internet or when you hear people say CC BY or CC BY SA, this is what they're talking about. CC stands for Creative Commons. BY is attribution, so this textbook is BY Cable Green. BY SA would be attribution share alike. NC is non-commercial, and ND is no derivatives. In open education, we think about these licenses in a very specific way. And what we're thinking about is we're, we're sharing. We're sharing with other educators. We're sharing with students. We're sharing with other members of the public that might want to do something interesting with our work. And so as educators, we're, we're thoughtful about which license we choose. And in essence, if you're at the top of this continuum, the public domain, that's the most open. You're giving the most degrees of freedom or the most flexibility to other people to do something with your work. Now, we actually have a tool called CC0 that looks like this icon here which gives up your copyright and puts your work into the public domain. Now, most educators don't use that. Most educators keep their copyright and use one of the other Creative Commons licenses. The CC BY license is widely used across the open education space. Uh, BY SA is what Wikipedia uses for all of the Wikipedia articles. Um, BY NC and BY NC SA are also used, although less so. And uh, the main reasons are that the more restrictive you get, the harder it is to reuse and remix somebody else's works. So non-commercial, for example, while it certainly does prevent commercial use uh, of your work, uh, non-commercial can be confusing sometimes in the education space. Uh, for example, I might work at a university, my university charges tuition, 
I might believe that that's a commercial activity that prohibits me from using someone else's NC licensed works. Well, in fact, I, you can still use an NC licensed work. Uh, you just can't charge for the work itself. Um, it, there's also a lot of confusion about printing and selling NC licensed works in a college bookstore. That's also okay as long as it's only cost recovery and there's no profit being made. But again, that, that's confusing to a lot of faculty or to bookstores, and so a lot of NC licensed work goes underused in the education space. The other reason that we want to be careful with, say, like a buy NC SA license is that you cannot remix a work that's under buy SA and a work that's under buy NC SA because the derivative of those two works, the, the, the mashed up remix of those two works, would want to be and would be required to be the same as the license of the original. And that's not possible because the original started with two different licenses. So we just want to be thoughtful and careful about which license we choose. And the one that m people are using more and more is either the buy or the buy SA license because it provides a lot of flexibility to other people. Now the two that we want to be really careful with and frankly stay away from are the two ND licenses. And the reason for that is they violate the five R's uh, definition, the legal permissions that we, uh, that we want with OER. If something is under no derivatives, you can't modify it. And so you're not allowed to revise the work and you're also not allowed to remix the work. So with OER, we, we stay away from those two licenses. So at Creative Commons, we like to say that we, we put the open in OER. Uh, if you find OER, it's probably in the public domain or it has a Creative Commons license on it. People are using Creative Commons licenses at an increasing rate. Uh, this was from our State of the Commons report in 2015, where we reported that over 1.1 billion licensed works on the web were available and under a CC license. It'll be interesting to see how high this number goes as we come out with this year's State of the Commons report. So a lot of people ask, well, this is great. I'm sold. I would like to use Creative Commons licenses. Uh, how do I share? Well, the first thing you need to ask is, are you the copyright holder? Um, do you have the legal rights to share? Because, of course, you can't share uh, if you don't have permissions to share. And so if you do have the copyright, if you own the thing that you'd like to share, then yes, you can add a CC license to it. Um, if you don't own the rights to it, you might have to uh, ask permission of the rights holder to find out if you can add a CC license or if they would be willing to add a CC license to the work. Something to, uh, things to think about and look for. Uh, one is that it's really easy to add a CC license. We have something called a CC license chooser on our website. Um, where you just go to our webpage, creativecommons.org, and say uh, it says share your work, and you can click on that, and it'll walk you through how to add a Creative Commons license to your work. Um, another thing you want to think about is clearly marking your work with a CC license. So on your work, you want to give the, the title of the work, the author, which might be you, you want to list what license you've chosen, and you want to list the source of the work or the URL. And so if I give the title, and I maybe link that title to where the work is, then I say who the author is, and I say what the license is, I'm giving the public all the information they need to find the work on the web and to give me proper attribution. We'll get to that in just a minute. It's also helpful to be able to search and filter resources by Creative Commons licenses. So for example, you can go to Google and you can go to Google Advanced Search and at the very bottom of the advanced search filters you'll see that you can filter by usage rights. And what Google is doing there is it's filtering the web by works that are either in the public domain or are under a Creative Commons license. Many platforms online like Vimeo and Flickr and others allow you to filter your search results by Creative Commons license. It's also helpful if you can download that resource in an editable format. The license gives you the legal rights to download, make a copy, and modify the work as long as it's not one of the ND licenses as we discussed before. 
And so as you're sharing your work, it's really helpful if you make it easy for people not just to view the work, but also to download a copy of it and to download it in an editable format. So what if you find somebody else's work? How do you give proper attribution? How do you give credit to someone else? Well, it's the same way that we're gonna make it clear to others. Uh, we're gonna list the title, the author, the source, and the license. And so uh, it doesn't really matter what order these are in, but wherever the work is, if you're sharing an image or you're sharing a video, wherever that thing is on the web, you want to include this information. If you want details about how to do this, uh, and in great detail, you can go to our, our marking page. Just go to the web and type in Creative Commons Marking, or there's the URL at the bottom of the screen, and it will give you examples of what this looks like and how to do it properly. Two other things I want to mention very quickly. Um, one is all open licensing and sharing digital things on the web is all very important, but it's, it's really infrastructure. Where this conversation gets interesting is where we talk about open praxis or open pedagogy or open education practices. And what we're talking about when we get into those conversations are asking questions like, what can we do when content is open that we can't do when it's closed? And so, for example, students can start to co-create the curriculum. They can modify a chapter in a textbook. They can update uh, a course pack that comes with a course because there's new research in the biology field uh, that they're in. So there's all sorts of interesting things. Uh, we're not gonna go into those in today's video, but it's something that you wanna think about as you're preparing for the regional consultation and for the second OER Congress. The last thing I wanna wrap up with, also a topic of importance at the OER Congress are open education licensing policies. So there's a, there's a general problem in the world, and that is that governments and public universities and public schools regularly use public funds to give grants or to give contracts for the production or the acquisition of educational resources. So that in and of itself is not a problem. It's a good thing that we use public money to get the effective quality educational resources that we need. The contracts and the grants that we give out with those public funds, the default terms are often such that they give the contractor or the grantee all rights reserved copyright on what's produced. So in this case, the public has paid for educational resources to be built with public money but the public does not have access to those works and probably doesn't have the legal rights to modify those works. And so this is really the problem, is that those educational resources are not openly licensed. Public can't access it, public can't modify it. So that's a real problem because those public funds are often from taxpayers and the taxpayers don't have access to what they paid for. Now the good news is the solution is very simple. This was called for in the Paris OER declaration in 2012 at UNESCO. And the very last point on the Paris OER declaration said that governments, when they're using public money, should ensure that those resources are openly licensed. And so the solution is governments in public universities and public schools, anybody that's using public money to give out education grants or contracts should ensure that those publicly funded educational resources are openly licensed. And put that very succinctly, we say publicly funded resources should be openly licensed resources. Now the good news is that's starting to happen. We're seeing more and more governments at national levels, at provincial and state levels, at systems of education levels, and at individual colleges, universities, and schools are starting to say, when we use public money, we will require a Creative Commons attribution, for example, on the products of the grant or the contract that we've provided. Foundations are starting to do this as well, and specifically what they're doing is they're putting open license requirements. They're putting something like a CC BY license requirement on the grants and contracts. And they're telling their contractors and their grantees, if you want this public money, 
one of the requirements is you must openly license what you produce. You must share those resources on the open internet. They must be available to download and in editable formats. If you're interested in creating open education licensing policies, feel free to contact me at any time. Uh, again, my email is cable at creativecommons.org and my Twitter is at cgreen. I'm more than happy to help you either understand Creative Commons licenses for your project or produce an open education licensing policy. Thank you very much and have a good consultation.